Was there ever an episode where Lois Lane knew that Clark Kent was Superman? We had a few slips, like when I was going to marry George. I, I mean, George. Forgive me, George. When uh, the wedding of Superman, it was a dream that he proposed to me, and I said, well, gee, I would love to marry you, but, you know, what about Clark Kent? And he says, well, now don't you worry, little girl. We're one of the same. He actually said that in the show, but, of course, at the end of the uh, episode, I wake up, and it was a dream. You and I shed a little tear. So. Scott, when people knew that I was in, Super, in Superman, said, how did George fly? Right, of course. And I, I, I never knew the answer. No, no you I, so that was George. I, 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 I don't, he didn't do well. He, the first year of the show, he was suspended on wires. He and, fell. They and dropped the, him. And he said, that's that, yep. and walked off the set. <laughs> they, had him fly, right. they had him flying. He wouldn't, they were rigging it like Peter Pan. And we were over at the old uh, Selznick right. studio, RKO yeah. Pathway, yeah. Howard yeah. Hughes right. owned it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they had this huge rigging. We were in this, the, their biggest sound stage. And uh, George, uh, <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, we were in a big forest set. And off he went and with the wires, and the wire broke. And uh, George was on the floor. And uh, <laughs> and was like that. I thought it was all special effects on the film. It was he, finally. Finally. But there was a time when he was there. The oh, yeah. They, they, well, this was for the first two shows, for instance. It was the second show, The Wire Broke, and that was that. And so he said, I fly some other way. Picture here of Robert Shane and uh, George Reeves made, I believe, in 1952. This is one of the first taken, it says, on the back of the, uh, of the television series. Mm -hmm. You're wearing the inspector's outfit there. I wonder what George was saying as that picture was being taken. Look at me in this. He probably was saying, don't laugh, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from Gary's book on Superman, here is another fantastic shot. And Jack has the story of what's behind this picture here. It'll be up in a second. Let me get it in the light. There it is. What's just happened here? Well, George had just come through a wall, and the little Henry, the wardrobe man, is brushing George off. And he's obviously said something that made me break up, and I've got my head on him laughing and I, I said to Gary it really for me made quite the book mm -hmm. worthwhile when you sent me that photograph because I never knew that such a thing existed and I, I really treasure it it was the spirit of the I show shot. there really seemed to be a camaraderie from what Noel and, mm -hmm. and everyone has talked about a tremendously warm feeling and you were only doing 13 episodes most uh, most years where Kojak and everything else is into 26 episodes yes. oh we did 26 a couple we did 26 yeah. couple you did 26, and we did all the first. I did 26 I yeah. might add parents Parenthetically, that there were very few residuals of, of any substance in those days, too. The first 26 were absolutely no residuals before any residual contract. And after that, the successive uh, series of 13 or 26, whichever we made, were just progressively a little better, but nothing like they are today. If we were to do Superman today, we'd all end up wealthy like right. Bonanza right. Team. Right. Marlon Brando and, for $2 million. You know, it's, it's just right. fantastic and terrible what mm -hmm. happened to we five. Yeah. from a financial standpoint mm -hmm. as a result of this true, series. True. The same, I, you know, you talked about where you were when you heard that George Reeves had taken mm -hmm. his life. Uh, what about the other, uh, the, the other two of you? What impact did that have when you heard that terrible news? Well, I heard about it first by seeing the, uh, uh, the, the banner line in the newspaper of that day. Uh, that was the first I knew about it, and uh, it was a shock. Uh, First of all, uh, so far as I was aware, George was not in any state of mind to take his life, uh, which I believe is the official version of his, uh, of his departure. And uh, intuitively, I knew that uh, probably we would never make any more, that we would never find a successor to play Superman equal to George, because he was marvelous. He was Superman. Mm -hmm. And we all five had a wonderful relationship together as mm -hmm. professionals. I had seen George just a few days before, and we all knew, as Jack said, that we had 26 more to go. And they said George was doing a feature film away from the Superman part, which he was very happy about. Mm -hmm. And we figured, oh, goody, we start in the fall and go through Christmas. It makes a nice Christmas gift to do another 26. And um, a girlfriend called me on the phone in the morning and said, did you hear what happened to George? And I thought she meant one of our friends. It was a shock. Just, you know, couldn't believe it. Not, not of George. And there were no clues before that would no. give you some idea that he was despondent, not, depressed, unhappy no, about no. it? I, not that I ever Not to my it. knowledge. I felt I understood it. I mean, I, mm. I feel differently. I mean, I know how you all mm. feel, but I felt I understood it. I was present at an extraordinary thing. And uh, George, when the Superman show, first when we first shot it, it was true that nobody knew 
what was going to happen. The television was going to be the way it was. Mm -hmm. And in 53, it went on the air. And just before it went on the air, Jim, uh, George made a film, From Here to Eternity. And he had a very good part in it. And I had another friend in the film, Monty Cliff. And Monty had arranged for me to go to the, uh, uh, the sneak preview at the RKO Pantages. And I knew George. Had, he played Stark. And, uh, uh, and the Superman show had gone on the air. And here was the biggest film of the year, Columbia, all the brass were there, sneak preview. Mm -hmm. And George came on the screen and the audience went wild, Superman. Mm -hmm. And he was cut from that film, I mean, to the bone. And mm -hmm. I was, of course, sick for him mm -hmm. being in that audience mm -hmm. and uh, identified, of course. And uh, I think George, I mean, he was a fine actor. He and, was. Uh, yes. and let's face it, we were all typed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, there, there was no way out of that uh, mm -hmm. that show, and uh, maybe I'm. It was my understanding with George, and I know he must have been heart sick mm -hmm. uh, th through the years with that. So I gave you one indication. Uh, I don't really mean to narrate, but there was one story that seemed very poignant in the book when you asked him, at, I think in 1951 or 1953, if he had ever worked with Mark Sandrich, uh, that you had just seen a Mark Sandrich picture. And uh, George, if I'm telling the story accurately, George said, um, know him, I appeared with him in So Proudly We Hail. Mm -hmm. And if Sandridge had lived, I wouldn't be here now. Yeah, I wouldn't be sitting here. He said we were on, it was the first day I ever met George. He said I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm -hmm.